Hey everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make the easy bobble shawl or scarf. You can easily wear this as a scarf or as a nice shawl and I will add that this particular one was made with just one cake of self-striping yarn, which was a lot of fun to work with. And I'll show you that yarn in just a minute. For those of you who have been following the Knit Crate boxes that are a monthly subscription, I made this one in a plain color using the yarn in one of those boxes. So in other words, you can use whatever you have on hand in your stash. Feel free to mix up the colors if you want, or just go with a plain monochromatic design. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. And as I do, I just want to say that this is an excellent project if you are fairly new to crochet. As long as you understand how to crochet your double crochets, I think you can pick this one up. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. For this project, I'm going to be using one cake of Lion Brand Yarns Mandala. Let's look at some of the stats on this yarn. This is 100% acrylic. This is a 590 yard or 4, 540 meter cake. 5.3 ounces or 150 grams. Please take note that it is a number three or a DK or a lightweight yarn. And for this project, I'm also going to be using a size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. And as always, I recommend that you have a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle handy. To begin, we're going to start with a slip knot. And I'm going to chain four and then to form a circle. I'm going to work a slip stitch in that very first of the four chains and we form a small donut. Chain three. This is for row number one and working into the center of this ring that we just formed, we are going to crochet five double crochets. Now I just wanted to demonstrate something here for you. As I just crocheted those five stitches, I am also crocheting over my extra thread. And this is just an easy way to hide that from the beginning. Okay, after those five double crochets, let me also be clear that the chain three in this pattern does count as a stitch or as a double crochet in the stitch count. Okay, then we're going to chain two. This will be the corner of the scarf or shawl. And then I'm going to crochet six double crochets. And again, I'm crocheting right into the center of that ring that we formed at the very beginning. And so we should have six stitches. Again, when you consider that the chain three is a stitch, a chain two, and then six stitches on the other side. We're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna trim this strand since it is hidden under 11 stitches. I don't believe it's going anywhere. Make sure you trim that carefully. Um, and don't trim your stitches, just the extra yarn there. Okay, now the way this pattern works is you're going to increase or work two stitches in the first stitch at the beginning of each row and at the end of each row. Okay, so two double crochets in that first stitch. And then we're going to work one double crochet in the other stitches until we get to the chain two. Okay. 
Okay, so we should have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight double crochets when you're including the turning chain. Once we get to the corner, we're going to work a double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet in that chain two space. Now this is going to change every other row, so do pay attention to what I do going forward in the chain two space. Okay, and now we work a double crochet in each of the remaining stitches. And when you get to the turning chain, we're going to work two double crochets in that space. Let's pause and take a look. So if you include, let's go ahead and look at it this way. If you include the chain two, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stitches on this side and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches on the other side. Don't worry about the numbers being different because this is going to continually change back and forth as we work this prob this um, project. Go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. I'm going to turn. And for row three, we're going to, again, work two stitches in that first stitch, which, again, you will do for every single row. Now we're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet in the next stitch. And we're going to do this until we get to the chain two corner. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in that next stitch. Chain one, skip one, and now we come to the chain two corner. This time we're going to work two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets in the corner. Now notice that the last time we only worked one double crochet, chain two, double crochet. This time two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. We're going to alternate between that from this point on. The next round will have one double crochet, chain two, one double crochet, and then the round after that will be just like the one we just worked. It's going to go back and forth. Okay, so whatever we do on this side, it should parallel or be symmetrical to what we've done on this side. So we skipped this last stitch. We're going to chain one. We're going to skip this stitch here, and then double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in that next one. Chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next one. Chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in that last stitch. When you get to the chain two, we're going to, well first we're going to chain one, and then we're going to work two double crochets in that turning chain. Now we're going to stop and take a look and see that this is symmetrical. Just counting the single double crochets, one, two, three, four, and on this side, one, two, three, four. These two count as two together. So, now to start row four, this is where we're going to work the bobbles. Chain three, two double crochets in that first stitch, chain one. Now for this row, we're only going to work in between the stitches into the chain one spaces. So we're going to work our first bobble, and this is the way we're going to work this. Can we wrap our hook, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. This is going to be a double crochet bobble. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. You should have three loops on your hook. I'm going to do this again. Now you should have four loops, pull through two. Now you should have five loops. Do that five times total. So you're basically making five uh, beginnings of a double crochet. You should have 
those five loops plus the loop you had on your hook to begin with, yarn over, pull through all six loops. Now notice something here that these are going to pop to the opposite side. So this is actually working with the back side facing us. Go ahead and give it a chain. Then we're going to work a double crochet in that next chain one space. Give it a chain, chain one. Time for another bobble. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, and five. Make sure you have six loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through. And you can kind of push that back so that it pops on the other side. Now you're going to notice that these are not that clearly formed at this point, but that's okay because um, this is you know, just kind of a, a looser version of these bobbles. But once we work the round, or I'm sorry, the row that comes after this, they will be more fully defined. Okay, after we complete that, chain one, double crochet in the next chain one space. If my hook can grab the yarn, there we go. Chain one, and then we form another bobble in the next chain one space. Working those five half double crochet, yarn over, through all the loops, chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet in the next double crochet, just like that, chain one, and now we're going to work a chain, I'm sorry, double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet for that chain two space. Now continuing down the other side, and again, we're trying to make this look as symmetrical as possible. Chain one, double crochet in that first stitch, chain one, and then again, we're going to work another bobble in that next space. Yarn over, pull through all six loops on hook, and give it a chain one to close the deal. Double crochet in that next chain one space, chain one, and then a bobble in the next. I'm just making those five um, first part of those double crochets. Check to make sure you have six loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all six, chain one, and Double crochet in the next chain space, chain one, skip the next stitch. We're going to work a bobble in the top of that last stitch. I have six loops, yarn over, pull through all six, give it a chain. Now we are going to work two double crochets in that turning space or the turning chain. Let's go ahead and take a look and we can see that we have one, two, three bobbles on this side and one, two, three bobbles on the other side. Again, once I work the next row, it will help them to pop a little bit better than what they are now. Okay. This was row number four, so now we're ready for row number five. Chain three, two double crochets in that very first stitch. This is very important that you begin and end with two double crochets. This is really the shaping process. This is the part that helps this shawl to grow in the direction that we want it to grow in. Okay, so now we chain one and working in between uh, it's in the, in the chain one space, but it's in between the double crochet and the bobble here. Go ahead and work a double crochet. Chain one, and skip that bobble, and work the double crochet on the other side of that bobble. Chain one, double crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, and the space on the other side of that bobble. Chain one. 
And again, in that chain one space. And now we get to the chain two corner. Now, if you're not sure what to do, you do um, what you did two rows previous. So we only worked one double crochet, chain two, one double crochet. So for this row, we're going to work two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets, chain one. and double crochet in the next chain one space all the way across. This should be very easy to see. And if you're not sure, you can always check the written pattern, which is available in my Lovecraft store, as well as in my Etsy pattern store. And you can double check the stitch count for each of these rows. I will try to stop and pause as I think to do that. Okay, so right at the end here, this is important. Skip the next stitch. Double crochet in the next. Chain one. And let's work two double crochets at the end. Let's pause and take a look. So let's go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and count all the double crochets. So you should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 on this side. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 on the other side. Now for row 6, we are going to turn. And we're basically going back to what we worked the second second row but I'm going to work this for you because it's going to look a little different we're going to chain three and as always two double crochets in that first stitch now we're going to work one double crochet in each double crochet and in each chain one space all the way across until we get to the chain two let's try that one again So I'm going to just go ahead and work this until I get to the chain two corner. So having worked from the turning chain and including the turning chain as a stitch, we have a total of 23 double crochets so far. Now we get to the corner and we notice that we had the two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet the last time. So now it's time to go back to just using one double crochet, chain two, one double crochet for the corner. Okay, and then we're going to go down the other side, just working a double crochet in each double crochet and in each chain one space across. So I'll go ahead and do this and I'll show you the last couple of stitches and give you the stitch count. Okay, so starting with the double crochet in the chain two corner. And counting so far, we should have 20 double crochets and we get to the turning chain and we're going to work two more. So we'll have 22 on that side. Again, the number on each side is different, this row, but don't worry about that because we are going to be adding to this side in just a second. So let's go ahead and take a look. And I wanted to show you just how the bobbles do stand out a lot better after completing the next row after them. Okay, now for row number seven, it's actually going to be the same as row number three. So from this point, we're really going to be repeating rows three, four, five, and six over and over again. But I'll go ahead and show you how this looks. So this is row seven, which again is a repeat of row number three two double crochets in that first stitch, chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next.
go ahead and do that all the way to the chain two corner. Once we get to the chain two corner, the last time we only worked one double crochet, chain two, double crochet, so now we know it's time to work two double crochets, or you can just look one, two rows behind and see what to do, because we are alternating between two and one on double crochets on each side of that chain two. I know that just sounded very confusing. So we have two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets here, and then one, chain two, one, and then two, chain two, two, and then we'll just go one, two, one, two. I know I'm repeating myself, but since this is a beginning project, sometimes we need to hear things more than once. I know I do. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go down the other side or up the other side, however you want to see it. Chain one. I'm going to skip the next. And if you're not sure, look at what you did over here. So we did skip that stitch here. So we're going to skip the next one. And it does work out in our stitch pattern. Double crochet in the next. Chain one. Skip the next. Double crochet in the next. Chain one. Skip the next. Etc. All the way until you get to the end of the row. At the end of this row, we skip the last stitch. And we work two double crochets in that turning chain. Let's do a quick stitch count on each side. So if you count this as a stitch, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 double crochets on this side and on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this is, once again, even. All right, so now we're on to the next row, which will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Row number eight. Row number eight is the same as row number four. We're going to start it and hopefully end it the same way. Chain three. Again, two double crochets in that very first stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch and working only in the chain one spaces, we work a bobble with those five beginnings of a double crochet. Oh, one more. I had to stop to count and notice I had one fewer loop. So we have six loops. Yarn over, pull through all, chain one, skip the next stitch double crochet in that next chain one space, chain one, skip the next stitch and work another bobble. Check to make sure you have six loops, yarn over, pull through all six and chain one. So go ahead and work that all the way until you get to the chain two space. I have worked a total of seven bobbles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And just note that I worked that last bobble in that, the top of that double crochet. And I've chained one. Now it's time to work just a double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet. Worked into that chain two space. Go ahead and give it another chain one just so that we're matching up to the other side. And then we're going to work a bobble in that first stitch. Yarn over, pull through all the loops, and give it a chain. And now we go back to working a double crochet in that next chain one space. Chain one, a bobble in the next chain one space. So go ahead and continue repeating that and I'll show you the end of this row. Now we've come to the last few stitches. We're going to skip the next and we're going to work a bobble in that last double crochet before the turning chain. Yarn over, pull through all five, six loops, chain one, and then we're going to work two 
double crochets into the turning chain. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn and look at the front side facing. So we should have seven bobbles on both sides and everything is still looking symmetrical. That is always, always, always a good thing. So we just completed row number eight. So what I want you to do at this point is to continue repeating rows five, six, seven, and eight over and over again until the shawl measures the size that you are comfortable with, the size that you would like. I will continue working on mine and then I will show you the size that I have once I complete using all the yarn in the cake that I have. Now, if some of you don't have the type of yarn that I have, it's not a problem at all. You can actually use some of the yarn, maybe even leftover yarn in your yarn stash, and you can change the color at will, or you can just, you know, use really any yarn, whether you have the number three weight, or even if you have larger, like a number four worsted or Aran weight yarn. If you're using those larger yarns, just be sure that you change up your hook size to match the yarn accordingly so that it produces the type of fabric that you would like. Now, before I go further on that assignment that I just gave you, I'm going to change to one size larger. This is a size I or nine or 5.5 zero millimeter crochet hook. And what this is going to do is now that this um, design has been clearly defined um, on the front side, I'm going to loosen it up just a little bit. This will give the fabric a little bit more drape as we go forward. So now I'm going to continue repeating rows five, six, seven, and eight, but just using the larger crochet hook. Um, nothing else will change. So go ahead and continue repeating those. And I will show you um, what I have in just a minute. I will show you how many rows um, that I have completed with the yarn in the cake. And then I will show you how to make the tassels. By sticking to those repeats that I mentioned earlier, I have completed a total of 33 rows. Let's go ahead and look how these colors have progressed in this. I just really, really love the way this has come out. Um, the colors behave very well. And by bumping up to the larger hook, you get a little more drape. It's not a really drapey type of yarn, but it you get a little more flexibility with that. So now I want to show you how I'm going to fasten this project off. So the way we fasten this off, we're just going to work a chain and we're going to pull it tightly. And I'm going to cut a generous strand. I would estimate, you know, five to six inches will be good and just pull that on through. We don't need that hook anymore. Actually, I was using that smaller hook just to fasten off and okay here we go I found my thread my needle so that I can thread this let's go ahead and thread this needle now what we're going to do is we're going to work this in to the stitches and what we want to do is we want to work this in on the back side um, and just to be clear this is the front side where the um, bobbles pop out and this will be the back side. So let's go ahead and run this down into the stitches. And it's a good idea, especially since we're dealing with color changing yarn, that we stick to the stitches that are of the same color. I mean, you can potentially hide, yeah, I guess we could hide them down in these other colors since it's very similar. Let's go ahead and try that. I don't think anybody is going to see this. And there are a lot more stitches where this can be hidden. Yeah, this will work fine. But generally, I like to stick to yarn that is of a very similar color. Okay, and this is similar enough to hide this into the work. All right. I think that's going to be fine. I'm going to pull back a little bit on that. That should be good. 
and go ahead and give this a trim close to your stitches but not so close that you endanger the um, stitches themselves being trimmed. Okay, so now we have the, the scarf or the shawl completed. I'm going to show you now how to add some tassels. So after crocheting those 33 rows, this is the yarn that I have left. And there should be plenty left for the tassels that we're going to make. And what I'm going to do is I'm using this little gift box to wrap the yarn around. Now if you don't have something like this, even a small piece of cardboard, um, when you measure the circumference, it is six inches. Um, you can even just wrap the thread around your hand should you prefer because we are going to trim this back quite a bit to get it even but let me just show you using this small gift box again you can even just use a a piece of cardboard that is approximately six inches around so actually three inches uh three inches wide will make it six inches all the way around these are going to be smaller tassels so i'm going to wrap this around the box about 30 times. Okay, so that's about 30. And so what I'm also gonna do, I'm going to trim Trim this yarn right here. And I am using a pair of very sharp scissors. Let's see how sharp those are. You want to make sure that you don't use a pair of scissors that just kind of gnaws on the yarn because that will just really make it frayed on the end. So you definitely need a very sharp pair of scissors. Now I'm going to trim another longer piece here. And I'm going to tie this approximately at the center. So let's go ahead and I'm going to even that up. Um, and, and you know, you can just guesstimate this because we are going to trim this towards the end. All right. So that looks, that looks about right. So now I'm going to tie this as tightly as I can and then do that again so that knot doesn't go anywhere. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little slip knot with this so this, so these strands don't get entangled in with what I'm going to do down here. Um, and this, these two strands are what we're going to use to attach it in just a minute to our project. All right, so now I'm going to cut another strand. I'm going to be generous that's about 10 to 12 inches. You probably don't need as much as that, but let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to wrap it around the base. And let's go ahead and even out these strands. And again, we're going to tie a knot, just a simple all right. Okay, we're going to hold this out. You almost need three hands to do this. <laughs> Make sure they get everything just right. Okay, so let's go ahead and tie this tightly. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to tie this very tightly. And I'm going to I'm going to tie a knot. But that's not all. I'm going to wrap it around again couple times this way and a couple times the opposite direction. I'm going to tie it again and one more time. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to conceal that knot. We can bring it inwards. Actually, that looks pretty good. I don't think that's even going to show, but if you are concerned that this knot is going to show, we can bring it in to the work quite a bit, and we can do that using our yarn needle again. Okay, so you can hide the knot by just bringing the strands down on top, just like that. 
and you don't see the knots at all. Look around all the sides, okay? Another option you can do if the knot is up a little bit higher is you can thread the needle and bring it down by, let me show you, by threading the needle and taking the needle and putting it through the top part and then working it down, you know, into the head of the tassel just like that. Okay, so this tassel actually is not too bad on on um, the evenness, but I'm going to go ahead and trim it nonetheless. So I'm going to hold this very carefully and I'm going to try to trim it evenly across just like that. Okay, that looks much, much nicer. So now once we get the tassel made, I'm going to make, well, let's go ahead and trim this again. I'm going to make a couple more because I'm going to have one at the, the, um, the bottom of the triangle and one on each end. So let me go ahead and show you how you would attach these. So now I'm going to attach the tassel to one corner of this shawl. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my little slip knot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my yarn needle. It, it does make it a lot easier. You could probably work it through without. And I'm going to go to the top of that last stitch worked in this project. All right. And I am just going to tie this on as tightly as I can. One. And then to do that again. Okay, so that's pretty good. So now I, what I need to do is run these strings. Okay, there are two things you can do. You can run them into the work itself, or we can run these back down into the tassel. So after threading the needle with both of those extra strands, and do notice that they are much longer and can be easily added to this tassel and trimmed, and that's what I'm gonna decide to do. Okay, so you can do them, you know, separately if you want. I'm just going to do them together just to save time. So I'm going to go down into the center of the tassel and pull them down like this and go all the way down just like so. And they are hidden with the tassel. And so now all that we have to do is trim them ever so carefully. There you go. And that way you don't have a bunch of strands, you know, hidden into the stitches. So you have your, let me show you, your beautiful tassel. I think this is going to look lovely on this scarf or shawl like this. All right, so let's um, go ahead and finish these and then I'll show you what I have. <music> you enjoyed making the easy bobble scarf or shawl with me today. If you did, I would love to hear from you. Please just comment below. God bless. Bye-bye.